Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of SpaceX Starlink 7-11. You are looking at a live view of Slick 4E at K at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. We're not on the Cape, we're out in California, and we're glad to have you joining us here. If you haven't yet, take a moment, let us know in the chat where you're watching from, and engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us, T-minus four minutes, 37 seconds and counting. Now, you may have joined us last night where SpaceX uh, attempted to launch seven da Starlink 7-11, but uh, we went live and they scrubbed it right at basically T0 without, uh, without having started their uh, live stream. So it was a little bit of fun there, but we're back here tonight and we can see the pad. We can see fueling is underway uh, and things are looking good for today's flight. And uh, you guessed it, it's another Starlink. You saw it in the title, 22 more Starlink V2 minis are on board. Tonight's Falcon 9 booster that you saw just a moment ago is booster 1063 going for its 16th flight after previously supporting Sentinel-6, DART, Transporter-7, Iridium-1 Web, SDA-0B, and 10 previous Starlink missions. SpaceX's autonomous drone ship, of course I still love you, is located downrange in the Pacific Ocean ready to uh, recover today's booster, uh, which is set to lift off in just over 3 minutes and 40 seconds from now. we got lots of people tuning in in the chat, great to have you here, we got Nathan in Mississippi, great to have you, we got 9280 in uh, just west of Cypress in California, we got Carr in Great Falls, Montana, Harrison's in Jacksonville, Florida, we got Mi uh, Mikey in North Carolina, Williams in Riverside, California who's headed outside to watch it in person. That is awesome. Erwin is in New York. We got Valerie in France. We're glad to have you all joining us here live today. Strongback Retract is just finishing up there. You can see that claw arm has opened and separated and retracted just a couple of degrees away from the Falcon 9 vehicle. At the two-minute mark, they will begin purging all the lines of that Strongback, safing the pad for tonight's flight. As always, if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad, and we'll work on answering those live to the best of our ability. SpaceX no longer provides live coverage through Starlink deployment, so we will be staying tuned to their social media on X for confirmation of that deployment. Deployment for today's mission expected one hour, two minutes, 47 seconds after flight, but I'll be taking you all the way through uh, liftoff, Miko stage set, first stage landing, and Sika 1, where the second stage will be in its initial orbit. Uh, it will conduct a second burn tonight before doing its deployment. That burn is set to begin 53 minutes, 43 seconds after flight. Now, no, we're getting tight on time, just over two minutes and counting, but I did want to uh, make note of uh, some breaking news that has been coming out here this evening from NASA and JPL, uh, and I'm just going to read it as uh, as we have it. Uh, Flight 72 status update for the Mars Ingenuity helicopter. On January 18th, NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter executed its 72nd flight at the Red Planet. The flight was designed as a quick pop-up vertical flight to check out the helicopter systems, following an unplanned early landing during its previous flight. That's why they wanted to check the systems. Data Ingenuity sent back to Perseverance, which acts as a relay between the helicopter and Earth during the flight, indicate that it successfully climbed to its assigned maximum altitude of 40 feet or 12 meters. During its planned descent, communications between the helicopter and rover terminated early prior to touchdown. The Ingenuity team is analyzing available data and is considering next steps on how they can reestablish communications with the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. So that's what we just have. That just came out in the last hour or so. So I wanted to make sure we've got that to you. We're in the final minute of the count here, so we're going to uh, focus on that. We'll talk more during the coast phase. Falcon 9 is now uh, starting up and taking over the flight countdown. And that has a... And we have order. We... Okay. Well, that's new. Um, we have startup and we have an abort in one sentence. Um, okay. Uh, Falcon 9 didn't like something. This is a smart vehicle. Um, the countdown has been held, as you can see. We will see if we get an update. Uh, but uh, no go, no go in the chat here today. I want to quickly say thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for that super chat. Very generous. Watching from Hesperia, California. Uh, rail fan uh, from Hesperia, California. Great to have you there. Uh, thanks for your support. John Ferris, thank you for your gifted membership. If you're just joining us, we are at T minus 59 seconds. Falcon 9 took over the count and immediately called an abort. Um, so SpaceX is now monitoring the situation. Uh, good. 
not great news on top of not great news on top of not great news. We've had the uh, Japan successfully landing on the moon, but it's not getting power. <laughs> Ingenuity might not be calling home, and <laughs> now we have a Falcon 9 that doesn't want to fly. Uh, I think we should just not launch on January 19th anymore. Uh, but uh, we'll wait to see if we have an update from SpaceX or if they're just going to conclude today's flight. They do have another opportunity uh, to launch tomorrow, the launch window uh, opening tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's 9 p.m. Eastern. I do want to make a quick programming note. Uh, we're going to do our best to cover all of the launches over the next uh, week or so, but tomorrow I'm actually heading back down to the Space Coast. I'm going to be taking a couple days off, some, uh, I would like to think, much-deserved time off uh, and spending that with some family, uh, but uh, I'll be doing my best to make sure we still cover at least the launches occurring in that time just for a few days, and then uh, we will be taking you uh, live on location to the 50th Annual Space Congress uh, in Orlando, as well as live coverage of the launch of the first ever Cygnus aboard Falcon 9 from Launch Complex 30, uh, from, I believe it's 39A, uh, from uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center or from Cape Canaveral uh, on the 29th. Well, there you have it. SpaceX has ended the stream, so no update there. So that's going to do it for us here tonight. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so you never miss another live launch coverage. Docking, undocking, or return to Earth. AX3 is headed to the International Space Station. Make sure you tune in to Axiom Space's social media for docking coverage in the middle of tonight as I will be getting ready to board a flight. And we hope to see you back here on the launch pad because here at the launch pad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And for the last time from our TLP Canada studio for a couple of weeks, my name's Zach, and I'll see you next time because space is better together. Goodbye.